Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah here from The Automator, and today we're demonstrating and providing a URL, so stick around if you want to get this download, it's pretty cool. Uh, it allows you to have a running script and automatically connect to that script and pop it open in one of, at least I think we have three default editors, and then if not, it'll just jump to the line. Is that right, Isaiah, if I remember right? That we is have correct. three different approaches. Yeah. Well, in general, it will open the... Uh, so let me let me kind of like explain. If you have a script here and you right-click on it and hit edit script, it usually opens on your default yeah. editor, right? Yeah. So, yeah. But what happens is we had a very special case, a very special need in one of our scripts. It was here we have HK string lookup tool. And one of the things that we were doing is that for, for each file that we found scripts on, we also found which line that hotkey was at. And what we wanted to do is do the edit command, but also jump to the line where that is. So we created a little function. This is the function that we have right here um, from that HK script lookup tool that grabbed the row on that list view that I showed you, um, send the edit command and so on. And it then to your point, we had different actions for different editors. And if it was not one of those three editors, it would do the genital action of pressing control G and jumping to the line. Because most editors, if you press control G, it lets you jump to a specific line in your code. That's what it does. So this is what it, we, we had this function. When you double click on one of these guys, it would just go ahead and open it up in your default script. And as you can see, just jump to the line and selected that line for me. It allowed me to edit that script very quickly. Now, what we did now is that we converted that to our hotkey V2. And I modified it a little bit. I modified the function a little bit so that it was not from a list view because that was my special case. Now, what you have to do is pass the handle to the script that you want to edit and the line that you want to jump to. In this instance, I'm just creating a GUI like this and just passing the GUI because in V2, you can pass a GUI to one of the send message commands or the win active commands. To those kind of guys, you just pass the GUI itself and it takes the handle of the GUI automatically for you. But you can use a window title, you can use the active window, whatever you want. You just have to make sure you pass a handle to my script, that's to the function. It could be anything you want. It could be a window title or a handle. And then the line that you want to jump to. In this example, I created a GUI so that this script has a handle. And then I pass it line 21. If I run the script, it would open the GUI and notice how it jumped to line 21 and selected it. I could just click up here. Let's do it again, F9. And it would just jump to that line and select it. Funny thing though, if I grab this exact code and put it in a different um, editor like this one here, and I run it, it would open it in a different editor or probably, let me see, let me try it. Let me see what it's going to do. Right, it opened it in VS Code and it jumped to that line. If I had site open, I noticed that if I had site open like this, let me save this, and I run it, it would open in site. Let me see. If I do this, run, it would open in site and then jump to the line 21 and actually capture it in site. So it doesn't matter which editor you have, it would just go ahead and open that editor and jump to that line and make it oh. you know, select the line. One th when we were talking before we started recording, I was like, yeah, how would you use this? It was a very use case. But then it dawned on me, like I use Grepwin a lot for searching across files and getting a list of files. And then I'll see the content. But then I, I'm like, oh, it's in that file. And I'll go to edit. But then I have to go find that text in there after I jump to yeah, it. But exactly. someone could use yes, it. You can, you can, that, yeah, right? you can do that. So oh. if, if WinGrep gives you the file name, which is probably, but here's the thing. This only works with running scripts, though, because it is sending the edit message to that script. It could be um, adapted, though. Okay. It could be adapted to actually read the file. If right. that here is not a handle and it is a path, if the file exists, then it would just open that file in your editor and then just go ahead and jump to the line because that can still be done. So in any case... Yeah, that's a very good use case. Hey, that gives me the file and the line number. I have the two things. 
then let's pass the file and the line number and let's make it just open that. So, yeah. So yeah, if you're wanting to learn more about this kind of stuff, I think that like the V1 to V2 transition course is a good one to start. Um, here we were talking, I don't know if you want to go into a little bit of the differences between V1 and V2 here, but um, it's interesting. they're quite interesting. Yeah, Yeah, I was just going to say it's interesting because in this particular instance, if you take a look at both of the codes, the difference is not much. I'm still sending a message. You see the send message here. I'm using the wind weight active. You might find the wind weight here. Um, and so on. So the, if you see these if statements, they look almost the same as here. So there, the differences are not that hard that you cannot understand the code. So, but there are some very subtle differences that we go, um, um, we, we talk about in the V1 to V2 transition. Like for example, here when I'm using the send command, notice that the control G is in quotation marks the variable is not, and the other part is in quotation marks. In V1, it's totally the opposite. The control G is not quoted, but the variable has to be surrounded by percent signs, it, and the enter is not. So, so there's some grab, subtleties that you have to do. Use the window snipping tool to grab that real quickly, and then right, just and show so it. To practice. That would fix it. And now I go here. Um, here we go. So yes, this one here, it's a little bit harder to follow what is going on. And if you miss the percent signs, or if you don't know what they are, you might not understand why if you pass a script line, it's not actually giving you the number or whatever, right? In this case, it is obvious that this is text, this is not text, and this is text. It's actually kind of right. obvious. And, and, and yeah, it's not something that you will miss. In this case, you might miss it. Um, in some other instances, like here, you will notice that this here, script line minus one, this is an expression there. So there is math involved there. But notice that this looks very similar to that. Right. They're totally different. This is an expression, and this is not. This is actual yeah. text. If you try to do math there, it's going to fail. And that's one of the things that V1 was very tricky. Yeah. One parameter was an expression, but the other one wasn't. Here, it's not like that. Everything is an expression. So if you want text, you have to put the quotation marks to make sure that that is text. And look how different they look. This is text. This is not text. It's very clear at a first glance of what is going on. So those kind of subtleties, we talk about them in, in the V1 to V2 transition. And um, for us, uh, for me... It's a personal opinion. The fact that it is more consistent, everything is an expression. If you need text, you have to put quotation marks wherever you are. It makes it simpler to follow along and not know like, oh, this is an expression, but this one isn't. And and why is it not failing? Oh, you know, those kind of things. Well, and also in V2, if you had a single quote in your text, you could just encapsulate the double or flip it. But in V1... Right. Oh, it's so ugly. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Now we, 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 we talk also, about those things in the hero group very often. Uh, like, uh, they, they, that, yeah, right? Yeah, they ask about the certain things that we go ahead and kind of like explain regarding this. All right. So thanks everyone. Please like the video if you learned something here. I'll put the URL where you can get this this either version of V one or V two of the script. Um, we do highly recommend you switch to V two. It's, uh, you know, V1's deprecated. Even though we're leaving a lot of our stuff in it, we're not developing our new stuff in it. So the new stuff goes into V2, leaving our old stuff in V1. But I um, hope you enjoyed that. Thank you.